sometimes it's very easy to generate large data sets and one doesn't really have the right questions. And sometimes one has the right questions and finding good data is suddenly very, very difficult and expensive. And you ask specific clinical or specific biological questions and you actually start assembling data set. It's very, very laborious and very expensive to get to the data volume you really need. The so-called zebrafish is a transparent um, model organism that transforms depending on certain toxicological states. And as you can imagine, if you wanna basically screen thousands of compounds, you have to really worry about automation and automated data analysis, basically fueled by a development of analyzing you know, faces with models and analyzing facial expressions. We developed an atlas for zebrafish. So we basically were able to increase the throughput of these kinds of studies by, by, by large factors, probably by 100 or 200. These images, because they're so complex, they're not really human interpretable anymore. Making sense out of this data is not trivial. So pretty much pharmaceutical companies will tell you that with every new te technology that comes on the market that generates a lot of data, they need about five to 10 years to understand what that data really means to them. For tissue microarray, which is like a little tissue stamp, you probably have up to 10 measurements. So if you have multiple views, fields of view, you get a hundred measurements and then you scale up and, until you have all sort of a whole multiplex, uh, a whole multiplex. So the whole multiplex TMA already has 180,000 measurements. So a multiplex slide, which generates, to, which basically corresponds to this, has 18 million measurements. And now, as you say, you have a, a small study, 300 images per study, which is really not a lot. That doesn't really, that doesn't even mean 300 patients. You go from 3,000 measurements to 4.5 billion measurements. The moving microscopy in general away from scientists that sit at eyepieces to essentially spreadsheets like you, you saw before. And the challenge is to basically develop image analysis or data analytics tools that are heavily automated. If you have a specific institute that sort of generates biological data and you have a big data theme, what are the current interactions? What you want big data analysis and big data science for is also mine existing public repositories to inform what you do locally. Right? Can you, for instance, generate really good hypotheses out of publicly available data? Can you then create models that are already guided by these hypotheses and then sort of feed back into, into the sort of big data analysis. And it's, I think it will still take a while to sort of set up this sort of um, academic ecosystem so that it really works and is very productive. So finally, I want to go back to the theme of computational pathology for the following reason. Digital pathology is really something that's happening in the clinic now. You can sort of uh, compare this to the advent of radiology I don't know, maybe 20 years ago. And these images are also very large. They are probably three to six gigabyte per image. An obvious uh, example is already that pathologists can work remotely, but we also want to support the, the work of pathologists with sort of quantitative measurements. We are, some of you might be familiar with the fact if I grade certain cancer types, this is a largely uh, qualitative assessment. It's really categorical. So there's a great opportunity of assisting that analysis is, is with quantitative measurements. So that brings me into the context of cancer immunotherapy. One of the newer, very, very promising um, approaches to sort of use it as an additional um, tool in combination therapy. We are currently um, designing a clinical trial that's specific to esophageal cancer. And now you're basically in the in this, in this, in this situation that you have to generate a data set that is really specific to the question you're asking and we want to make um, use of tools like single cell sequencing and then all of a sudden just gathering data from 60 patients costs unbelievable amounts of money. But on the other hand if you really are in a specific context and you look at what data do I really need then it is very very difficult to to basically generate it and also to curate it. We collect a lot of data in a sort of defined way and we're really not analyzing five or ten images but we, we basically have a whole workflow where we apply these tools over and over again. An example here is at Genelia Farms that's near, near Washington. They analyze fly brains 
and they can now analyze up to about 400 fly blades a day in a fairly robotic way. These are all things we haven't dreamt of maybe 10 years ago.